Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my YouTube video. In this video, we're going to be working on building a temporary upper control arm for the front suspension on the Baja tube chassis. In the last video, I was kind of fitting up the lower control arm and the steering rack and I needed to make a temporary steering rack, which I did. I've got this plate. This is just a temporary plate. It's only it's actually less than an eighth inch thick, so it's it's totally temporary, which makes it easy to work with. And it just comes around, and then it's just got a little tab on the bottom, and then it's just got a hose clamp holding it on here. This allows me to slide this back and forth as I'm kind of trying different positions for this uh, steering rack. Now, once I got the steering rack on there, like it is right now, and I put the front spindle on, and I got a level on the front of the spindle so I can put it basically straight up and down or zero camber and then I can take the uh, lower control arm and I can raise it up and down and kind of simulate some suspension travel and I've got a block of wood cut right here and if, if I've got it sitting on this block of wood then it's actually sitting at ride height because where I've got this the chassis still sitting on the fabrication stand and that's holding it 16 inches off the ground which is the ride height of the chassis and then this stick puts this at the puts the spindle at the right elevation um, as if it had a 33 inch tire on it there. So that kind of mocks this up. The steering rack mocks this up. So then I clamped on, I just put the Himes in there, and again I just hose clamped a piece of aluminum angle iron on here so that I can adjust the length. And then with that, I can actually start cycling the suspension because like I noted in the first video, I do believe I'm going to have to move this mounting point so that I can uh, get it so that it doesn't do what they call bump steer as the suspension goes through its motion. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to install my bar that runs through the center here and then I'm going to install a temporary, and, and when I say temporary I mean a temporary, upper control arm. Now this isn't going to be designed to clear the shock absorbers or anything like that. This is just going to be designed to be in place and hold the spindle at the proper location as the suspension goes through its motion so that I can fine tune the steering geometry. So what I've done is I've already fabbed this piece and this is going to go right right down here. So this is going to be the upper bar that the upper control arm connects to. Now what I did to make this is if you guys remember and I'll put a link in the video right about here when I was designing this um, originally before I actually started making any of the parts I made this board which is a full-size representation of what it's going to be so that I could kind of dial in the spindle angle and the uh, the front geometry of the suspension. So now if I look at this, these are the two lower bars on my chassis. This is the upper bar that I'm just about to um, to install and with this full-size one-to-one -one layout I was able to find out that I need eight and a half inches between these two. So I simply cut two two by fours that are eight and a half inches and then I slide them in here. This one's kind of free floating, but this one I actually clamped in place. And then that's what I used to um, fabricate this bar. I would just lay it on top of these two by fours and then notch it back where it connects with the chassis there and notch it where it connects with the chassis right there. So I just need to make sure that this is running center and I'm going to tack this in place. Alright, now I got this bar, my upper bar tacked in place, and it is exactly eight and a half inches top to bottom. It's running completely parallel with the lower bars here. 
So this is the good foundation for my suspension. And remember, the chassis is flat, but I run my suspension up seven degrees. So the chassis is flat back here. Starting right here, it goes up seven degrees. So these are up seven degrees, and this one runs up seven degrees. But what I'm gonna do now is I need to install this uniball in the top of the arm right here. It doesn't go in right now. I do have a, a tool I could draw it in, but what I'm gonna do is just heat this up a little bit with the torch, and then this will fall right in there. So I'm gonna set that in place. Then I've got this temporary upper control arm. I'll tack those tabs on there and then I'll tack some tabs on down here to have it grab a hold of that uh, uniball. Okay guys, now that upper, let's call it a temporary upper control arm is in place. I just tacked these on there. I can easily break those off when I need, because I'm going to use those tabs for the actual control arm. And then over here, I've got a hose clamp drawing it in nice and tight, but I also put two little tacks up at the top there. And again, I'm, I'm actually going to reuse these tabs for the upper control arm, but I'll easily be able to just crack those off and grind them. Right now, I've got it sitting at ride height. This stick holds this up right at ride height, and if you look, it's level, so it's got zero camber, and that'll be my ride height position. And whenever I dial this stuff in, you do it at ride height, because you want everything to be perfect at ride height. You want everything to be perfect at full compression and full droop as well, but if you're gonna, you know, you're gonna definitely be perfect at ride height, and then really you're gonna be as close as you can at the other two extremes. But if we look at this right now, sitting at ride height, I've got the steering box is centered, so it's in the straightforward position. I've got zero camber. And to the best that my eyeball can tell me, it, the steering is straight ahead. Now, a couple things I want to point out to you guys. Number one, if I can see this with the camera, if you notice, if you draw a line between the upper pivot point and the lower pivot point, and then if you look at the pivot point for the steering, the steering is actually to the inside. And that matches with my full size layout because on this, this is my lower pivot point. This is the upper pivot point, so they would have a line going through them this way. And then this little X right here represented where my, my steering pivot point would be. So the steering pivot point is in a little bit that way. 
Now that's okay, except that if you come over to the spindle and you look at the upper pivot point and the lower pivot point, if you draw a line right through those, the steering pivot point is almost right in line. And that's actually really good. But in order to compensate for the inside steering link being a little bit longer, this pivot point actually needs to come this way a little bit. I'm talking like half an inch for that to actually be perfect. So, and then of course, I want this steering rod to be parallel with the upper and lower control arms at ride height. I think the way I set this up, the upper and lower control arms are almost running perfectly parallel to each other. I'd like to get this set up so that it runs parallel with the lower control arm. It's hard to tell right now because this lower control arm has a kick to it, but if you remember when I was originally laying this stuff out, I did build a lower control arm that is perfectly flat, which is this right here. It has all the same dimensions, the same length and all that, it's just, it's flat. And when I put that in there, the fact that it was flat put the, uh, the lower uniball at, at too steep of an angle at full droop, so I did away with that. But in the next video, I'm going to reinstall that lower control arm, and then I'm going to make some blocks using that lower control arm as kind of like a flat surface, and I'm going to use that to figure out what angle this needs to be at to be perfectly flat with that. And if I do decide to make that change, I'll take this off, I'll, I'll grind out this whole piece right here, I'll set this up in the perfect position, and then I'll fabricate a new bracket that will bolt onto that exactly where it needs to be so that this is parallel with the lower control arm. What I did notice is that it's, it's all actually much, much better than I thought it would be. When I was just dry fitting this and I didn't have the upper control arm in place, it was, it was seeming like it was way off at full compression. Because if right now at ride height we say it's straight, if I take it up to full compression, now here at full compression you'll notice that the camber is no longer zero. But we knew that that, we knew with the geometry that as it compresses, it would actually lean the tire in a little bit at the top. So that's why I dial the camber in at ride height, but I know that it's going to change at full compression. But if I look at it, I mean the steering didn't really change at all. Oh, holy crap, I take that back. The steering box moved a lot. Let me center that again. Oh my goodness, look at that. That is way out. That is horrible. Okay. That tells me what I need to know. I'm definitely going to need to cut this out, unfortunately. I don't want to do that, but I will. I'll cut all this out, I'll grind that clean, and like I said, I'll prop this in the perfect position, and then with that, I'll draw where these need to be to move this out a little bit, and it's going to move it up a little bit. Just for funsies, let me put it at what I think will be full droop, and let's see what the steering does. Alright, so as expected, I put a a vice grip on the steering box this time so that it won't it won't rotate at all so that kept the box centered don't think that I'm a butcher putting a set of vice grips on that those vice grips are on real soft really just enough to hold them in place because I didn't want to mar up those splines at all but if you look now as it drops 
it started turning this way. So when we were at full compression, it was this way. Then as we went down, it turned. Let me, let me see if I can set the camera up so that you guys can see that. So if you look at it now, hopefully you can see that it's, it's towed in a little bit. And as it comes up, it tows out, if you guys can see that. Probably can't. At full compression, it's towed out. And it goes down, it tows in a little bit. That's bump steer. We've got a temporary upper control arm mounted in place, so now we can cycle this thing and we can see exactly what the steering's doing. And as we just saw, there is a pretty good amount of bump steer, definitely more than I'm willing to put up with. So it's Sunday night right now. What I'll do during the week is I will prep this so that for the next video, we will tear this apart, which, you know, kind of sucks, but again, um, what do I care? I'm doing this for the fun of it anyway. So we'll grind this out and kind of smooth it out so we're starting from scratch and we will prop this up for what, what should be the perfect geometry and we'll figure out how far out this should be. We'll kind of put it in the position and then we'll fabricate a new bracket here that will put it exactly where it should be. And just like we did on this upper control arm, we'll tack it in place first and then we'll cycle the suspension and see if the bump steer is gone because at the end of the day, that's what we're looking for is no bump steer so that as the suspension is going through its, through its, its motions, those front tires are staying basically perfectly straight. This is going to be part of the series where I'm just piece by piece putting together this front suspension. I did lay all this out in full size, but I always then have to build it and kind of figure some of it out as I go along. Um, and the steering is, is always the most difficult part, so that's what I'm working through right now. When I get that all figured out, then we can go back to the shock absorber mounting locations, and of course at that point, this will have to go because um, this won't clear the shock absorber at all. So anyways, thanks for watching the video guys. Hopefully I see you on the next one, and hopefully what I'm showing you here is helping you guys with whatever you're working on. Hopefully I see you in the next video. Take care.